So the hero's just gone live. I'm tap tap. We're gonna see what this hero actually does. like. We have the audio on for one reason. I wanna hear what this hero sounds like. We've been doing this lately. What do you think she's gonna sound like? The void. Just a bunch of brainless creatures. Okay, okay, that's not bad. I'm just not interested in such a poor little thing like you. Woohoo! The best thing about the star sector is that there are no speed limits here. The void. Just a bunch of brainless creatures. Okay, it's okay. So, um, now that we have that open, I'm going to jump on over to our other server so we can look at all of her special power-ups here. So... Let's jump over to this list and let's see what she is about. So let's move just straight to the tree to understand how she works. Who? this is a lot of text. If you guys don't have a PhD, let me try to explain this. Okay. So deals 2000 attack damage to three random enemies. That's a good amount. Restores HP equal to 30% of max HP. That's also good. Crazy Tim Tim. Thank you for the sub. Of course you got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> After it increases self attack by 25% for three rounds, that's not bad. Uh, enters that 40% dodge, that is pretty solid. If you are already under it, you then release support fire four times immediately. Okay, to one random enemy, support fires the following effects based on the number of starlit beacon. Oh my gosh, I don't, I what? Uh, so yeah, you can have a 70% chance to inflict the stun, that's kind of cool. Two layers. Uh, deals extra damage which ignores a hundred percent okay so this is literally like a doom terminator vulcan effect where it's a hundred percent ignoring all defenses that the hero has that is strong afterward inflicts one layer of starlit beacon on the target each support fire makes interstellar raiment gain four more chances capping at 12 12 chunk dirty with the prime too thank you so much man 12 extra attacks the chase attack and increases the pass skill a total release chase attack times to four. holy cow that's a lot of hits and this starlight beacon three is a skill effect stackable up to two layers and effects may vary according to the number one reduces the target's damage reduction by 30 two layers additionally increase reduces their control immunity by 30 that is strong uh so more skill damage Support also reduces the enemy's attack by 10%. When dealing damage to three random enemies, there's a 33% chance to inflict one layer of that Starlight Beacon. Wow, so this is really, really lowering a lot of enemies' like damage reduction and such. Uh, still, I don't think a way to beat Aspen, because Aspen has a forever stacking attack steal, whereas this hero does not. So we'll have to see. So the basic attack changes to attacks two times, each dealing 800% to one target. Okay, 70% chance to get more of those Starlit Beacon. That sucks that it's not 100. Uh, if the target already has it, there's a 70% chance to get the stun effect. If self is under the Interstellar Arraignment, attacks two more times uh, and gain two more chances. Again, capping. Oh, holy cow. So you can get up to 12 and it just like... Oh, so it's not like it consumes it, I don't think. It just keeps going up to 12 on the active and the basic. This feels like a Russell-type hero, too, the way that he has or she has all these extra hits. That is interesting. Let's see what is affected. All damage dealt. Uh, deals extra damage to the target with two layers, ignoring 100. Oh, my God. So even the basic attack can get past all defenses like a Drake. That's pretty insane. Because all these things can happen without having to charge up to like round six, round seven, like a Doom Air Vulcan. Attacks three times instantly instead. Okay, so it's just one extra attack. Okay, not too bad. Passive skill. When any hero dies on the battlefield, Interstellar Arraignment gains four more chances. So this is more chances to chase an attack. If the dead hero is an ally, you get more all damage reduction uh, and restore HP. If a hero, and that's really good in the early game potentially, like a really good heal, even with like the really cheap heroes on your team. Uh, if the dead hero is an enemy and additionally increases self attack and 50 energy. Okay. That's its attribute buff effect lasts for four rounds. Oh, wow. That's big instead of two rounds. And then all allies, excluding self, gain 50% of the same attribute buff. Huh. 
Uh, I think you might want this here. Well, no, no, because this isn't going to be good on bosses because no enemies are dying. Never mind. I was like, this is a support hero for Aspen with all this extra attack, but this is only in situations where you can kill enemies. So it's still pretty solid for other game modes, though. This passive skill is gigantic. Uh, okay, when self is under interstellar arraignment, which... Or armament, sorry. I keep saying arraignment. I mean armament. You guys are probably getting triggered, but hey. Uh, and an ally takes damage from an active or basic. You consume one chase and attack chance and attack the attacker. 1600% oh, of attack damage and reduces their crit chance. Meanwhile, inflicts the starlet beacon on them. Oh, now that's a 100% chance to apply that. That is really good. Uh, each time you enter it, you gain 12 chances to chase and attack. Holy cow. The available chances are zero. It removes the effect. After the total release, chase and attacks reaches a total of 16. Additionally, releases Stellar Blast. This deals 3,200 divided by the surviving enemies to all enemies, and it ignores all defenses. Yo! Ignores all defenses. And then Stellar Blast has the following effect based on the number of layers. Do the chance to stun or a chance to deal extra damage. This isn't like a crazy round one active type hero, but it, it sounds like it's going to add up pretty quickly. Stats additionally reduces the crit damage. Okay. Uh, when Stellar Blast removes Starlet Beacon, there's a 30% chance to remove only one layer. Okay. Instead of two. That's not bad. Uh, her core, let's get the real reading on this. When self is under interstellar armament uh, at the end of each round, increases control immunity for three random allies. Okay. Uh, when you chase an attack, increases the target allies damage reduction. That's good support. This effect won't be effective. After stellar blast is released, increases all ally speed. Ah, core doesn't seem all that great. She has CC in her last passive. Yeah, yeah, everything kind of has... Every one of her abilities has a chance to CC. Uh, her basic, her passive, and her active all have chances to stun. So, let's see what this tree looks like here. So, number one, the base skill. Uh, chases When she chases and attacks, it consumes four layers of your transition power to deal extra damage to that target. Again, ignoring all defenses. Cannot release... When there are not enough transitions. So that's not too bad. Weird that it's four layers. But let's see what goes on here. Uh, additionally deal 600%. Ooh, that's really good. Ooh, ooh, wow. These are really powerful ones right here. First tier of damage, really, really nice. Uh, reduces crit damage, armor. Yeah, that's pretty standard for there. There's a 50% chance to additionally inflict Petrify Lock Rock on enemies who have no less than 50%. That's interesting. But it's only on one target. 50% for a cold freeze. Or just give yourself more energy. This one's interesting. Because usually this is a damage node too. Actually, yeah, this is usually a damage node. So this one must be damaged. No, it's not. Ooh, I don't like that. This is usually a damage node as well. It's support. Interesting, and then the final skill, this is the big daddy one. Uh, when interstellar armament chases and attacks, if four more layers are owned, it deals extra damage without consuming it. Yay, if so, oh God, I hate when it does that. If self has 12 layers, it consumes them with a 50% chance to inflict one layer of starlit beacon on all enemies. Afterward, deals 800% damage to all enemies, ignoring all of their defense. For every one layer of starlit beacon the ticket has, Deals the same damage one more time? That kind of sounds good. So for every layer, essentially, you're doing multiple attacks. And basically every one of her skills bypasses defenses. Go back to the second one. It said Lord of Sparkles. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> Good call. Nice translations. That was a copy paste. Uh, so that is solid. Very good kit, I would say. We'll have to see how it works out. 
Uh, and honestly, her tenants are not horrible. She has Natalia and she has Hyperspace Hunter Ilamok. This is an intriguing hero as a potential first or second Transcends Hero build order. You build her, then you build a Natalia, and then you build a Hyperspace Hunter Ilamok. Uh, as far as recent tenants go, this is by far one of the best we have seen. Like, the best. There's no priest, and there's no assassin slots. This hero, I think, is going to have potential, and we're definitely going to have to see if she shifts the map.